So your bell work was all about special patterns. <clears throat> These are patterns that we did when we were foiling. We had special cases when we were foiling. The first special case that we did when we were foiling was something called conjugates. If you remember, which is like the first couple that you did on bell work, you have the same two terms, X and Y, but it is plus and minus in between them. And when this particular case happens, when you multiply conjugates, you end up with just two terms. The first term is the first one squared. The second one is the second one squared. And you always have a minus in between them. <clears throat> so now we're going to be factoring. Factoring is starting with that thing on the right and going to the thing on the left, right? So now they're going to actually give us this piece and we should recognize that that is the factoring. This is actually called the difference of squares. It is always difference, subtraction. And squares means you have two perfect squares. Anytime you have two perfect squares being subtracted and you're trying to factor them, you are going to factor them into a special case. You are going to take the square root of the first one and the square root of the second one, and then you're just going to add and subtract them. So if you look, we have a squared minus b squared. a squared is a perfect square. b squared is a perfect square. So our factoring would be a plus b, a minus b. So let's look at this with actual numbers. Look at example one right there in the middle page 420. They want us to factor x squared minus 49. Anytime you see a binomial, two terms, and it is being subtracted, you're going to check and see if it's possibly a special case. All right, and so I'm going to say, well, is this a perfect square? Yes, any variable squared is a perfect square. What about 49? Does 49 have a perfect square? What is it? 7. So if I took the square root of x squared, I would get just x if I, they take the square root of 49, I would get 7. This tells me how it's going to factor. I'm going to say x plus 7, x minus 7. Do you think I can check it? Yep. Absolutely. You can FOIL it, right? If I were to multiply this, I would say x times x. That is x squared. x times negative 7 is negative 7x. 7 times x is positive 7x, and positive 7 times negative 7 is negative 49. When I simplify, negative 7 and positive 7 cancel, I get x squared minus 49, which is exactly what I started with. All right, it will always be plus minus of the square roots. When I first look at this, I don't think I have a, a perfect square, right? This 5 does not have a perfect square. In fact, 5 is prime. I don't have anything that square roots to 5. However, my first step in factoring, if you remember from the thing we did on Friday, what is the first thing you're supposed to take out when you're factoring? Common, common factor. Do 5 and 125 have a common factor? Yes. yes, they do. So my first step here is to take that 5 out. 5 divided by 5 is 1. What is 125 divided by 5? Uh, 25. 25x squared. Now I'm going to check again. Do I have perfect roots? Does 1 have a perfect square root? Yes. What is the perfect square root of 1? One? 1. 1. What about 25x squared? What is the square root of 25? 5x. And there we go. So that will be my factoring. I'm going to leave the 5 in front. That is part of your factoring. Then I'm going to say the 1 plus the 5x the one minus the five X. And that will be my factoring for this one. So my rule is to always take that common factor out first to see if possibly you can keep going with it. All right, so for this one, we have multiple variables. We have X, Z, and Y. I am gonna check for a common factor. In this case, 36 and 64 actually do have a common factor. What goes into 36 and into 64? Four, Four does, right? Um, what about my variables? I have an x to the 6, z to the squared, and y squared. Does anything go in with my variables? No, nothing in common. So I can take the 4 out. What is 36 divided by 4? Nine. 9, and I still have the x to the 6, z squared. What is 64 divided by 4? Yep, 16, all right? 
Now I'm gonna see if I can go further. So I'm gonna look at my numbers first. Does nine have a perfect root? Three. Three, what about 16? Four. Four, let's look at my variables. Any variable to an even exponent will have a perfect root. Just divide it by two, all right? So the perfect root of x to the sixth is six divided by two, x cubed, all right? Um, the perfect root of z squared then is two divided by two, which is just to z to the first power. What is the perfect root of y squared then? Four. All right, that tells me what I'm going to plus and minus. That tells me what I'm gonna use there. I'm gonna leave the four out, and then I'm just gonna use these two with plus and minus. 3x cubed z plus 4y, 3x cubed z minus 4y. The next special case is called perfect square trinomial. This is actually when you have a group squared. So on your bell work, it was the last two problems that we did. There is a pattern that happens with these. So even if you don't remember the pattern, you can still do your multiply across, take your factors, break it out into four, and factor by grouping. The problem is that if they're larger squares, like let's say you have a 25 and a 36 as your perfect squares at the beginning and end, that's gonna be a big old number to multiply and try to get factors of, right? And so remembering this is going to help you do them quickly. Um, when we did the bell work, we did something like this. What happens when you multiply something like this is you have a perfect square here and a perfect square here, just like you did on the other special case. It starts with a perfect square and it ends with a perfect square. But this guy will always have a middle term. The middle term is what's going to happen if you take those two square roots and multiply them together and then double it, okay? And so anytime you see a trinomial with a perfect square on the ends, beginning and end, then you want to check the middle to see if that is the two square roots multiplied together and doubled. If it is, you have a perfect guy and you can go straight to your factory. You don't have to go the multiply across and all that good stuff, all right? And it's going to factor just like this. If it is a plus in the center, then it's going to be a plus here. So you're going to be given this piece of it and go backwards. So here we have a perfect square, perfect square, and two times the square roots multiplied. It's all plus, this is gonna be plus. Here we have a perfect square, perfect square, and then we have a minus, it's gonna be minus. This last one will always be a positive. Why is that? Well, if I am multiplying two of the same exact number, it has to be positive. If I'm multiplying a positive two and a positive two, I'm gonna get a positive four. If I'm multiplying a negative two and a negative two, I'm gonna get a positive four. So for perfect square trinomials, the last one must be positive for this to work, but the middle one could be positive or negative, depending on if you're plus adding or subtracting. Let's look at the examples. The first example. So when we come up to something like this, we're gonna say, okay, what I'm gonna notice is I have a perfect square at the very beginning, and I have a perfect square at the very end. All right, x squared is a perfect square, 25 is a perfect square. So then I'm gonna look and say, well, what is the square root of the first guy? Well, that's an x. What is the square root of the last one? That is a five. 
So to check to see if I have a perfect square trinomial, I'm gonna say, well, what happens if I multiply these two and double it? So two times x times five. That gives me 10x. That's what I have in the middle. That tells me this is a perfect square. And all I have to use is this one and this one. So I'm gonna say it's going to be an x and a five. I look here to see if I plus or minus, that's a plus, and I square it. That is my factoring. Perfect square, perfect square, and the center one is the, the products doubled. Okay, the products doubled. You can check it. This is the same thing as saying x plus five, x plus five, foiling it, x squared plus five x, plus 5x, plus 25. That is going to be the same thing. So I know that that is my answer and it is correct. What do I need to do here before I do anything else? First step in factoring is to look for what? Greatest common, Greatest common factor. Do 12, 36, and 27 have anything in common? They have a three in common. So I'm gonna take that three out first. 12 divided by three, that's gonna be four x squared. Negative 36, that's going to be negative 12, positive 27, positive 9. All right? Now I have a trinomial. I'm going to check and see if I have perfect squares. Is 4x squared a perfect square? Yes. What's the square root? 4x. 2x. So we have to, yeah. What about 9? Perfect square? Yes. All right. If I multiply 2x times 3 and double it, what do I get? That's what I have, all right? So I have a perfect square trinomial, which means to do this factoring, I'm gonna use the 2x, I'm gonna use the three. Look here to see what you do in between them. That's a minus, all right? It is squared. And don't forget I pulled out a common factor that also needs to come down. So my factoring is the first one square root, the second one square root, Add or subtract is determined by that middle term, and then it's just squared. All right, my first step is to make sure I do not have anything in common between all of them. I have a one and eight and a 16, nothing. X to the six, Y to the fourth, X cubed, Y squared, Z and Z squared, nothing, all right? So now I'm going to see if I have a perfect square trinomial. This has a perfect root. How do I know that? My my. When they're all divisible by 2, right? So my um, exponents are all divisible by 2. So this is going to be x cubed, y squared. This guy has a perfect square root. It's just going to be 4z. If I multiply those two together, I would get 4x cubed, y squared, z. And then if I double it, I will get 8x cubed, y squared, z, which is exactly what I need. Okay, so I know this is a perfect square trinomial and I can go straight to my factoring. I'm gonna factor using this and this, and then I'm gonna go here to decide if it's plus or minus. And that is my factoring for that guy. I'm done, all right?